Coach, his team coming off a tough loss to Marquette. Here are the starting lineups sponsored by Jeep. There is only one. The second leading scorer for St. John's, David Jones, he will not start due to illness. He is available to play. Casey Indefo for Seton Hall returns to the lineup after coming off the bench at Marquette. Stopped the streak of 62 straight. Ready to roll on New Year's Eve in Newark. A lower bowl sellout, capacity crowd, and away we go. And Seton Hall has it first. Off a road loss to Marquette. Yeah, you'll, you'll notice both of these teams will play that man-to-man -man aggressive defense, challenge the perimeter, possibly double team when they get somebody down low, just like that. Adari Richmond averaging 18 per game so far in three big East games. It's Tyrese Samuel and Soriano. Matchup to watch. And Soriano gets the best of him there. Shot clock runs out. And a very good defensive start for St. John's. Soriano with terrific position defensively. Three blocks against Xavier the other night. Just holds his ground. This is a nice matchup, though. Soriano has really been putting up, as we know, the double-doubles throughout the course of the season. He's going to be touching the ball, I would think, a little bit more frequently down on the blocks. You saw the strength of schedule on the bottom there for St. John's. Gaudy record, but they've lost a couple against quad one opponents, including Xavier, on Wednesday. It's like a matchup defense with St. Seton Hall, but they lost the shooters. Posh Alexander misses on a three. Pretty yeah. good effort, out of bounds, though. Last touched by Omar Stanley, who makes the third start of the season. He's in for David Jones here today. So Jones is available. That's a guy, if he can't give you his normal production, that's a big, big loss for St. John's. Yeah, averaging 15 points a game. Richmond on Soriano. Into the lane with the left. It's still closed for both teams. It's knocked off the hands of Ade Wusu. And back to Seton Hall. There is David Jones. He is available today. Junior from the Dominican Republic who transferred in after two years at DePaul. 19 and 10 against Xavier the other night. Fourth game this season with a double-double. So an impact player when he's scoring and shooting the ball well. And also off the glass. Think about he and Soriano. 15 combined double-doubles. Nice drop step. Samuel misses a bunny. Yeah, just hurried that last second part of the shot just then. That was a beauty of a drop step to drop the baseline and go around Soriano. They're going to go back to him down on the block and see what he does. He likes a little jump hook from time to time. Good work there, double teaming him though. Oh, that's an elbow to the gut. They missed that one. Dawes went down. Floaters missed on the fly by Mathis. And they're going to have to stop play here for a second and check on Dawes. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of people in traffic in there. But we have a very good look at this from our angle. Watch the left elbow, I believe, right here. See that? He gets him right on the numbers. Um, so I don't think there's going to be a call on it. I think you're going to just play on. Yeah, no call. So Dawes is okay. Just a hit to the chops. Well, do you expect know, anything else with these know, two? We're calling it, you know, play on and nothing happened there. But don't, don't ask Dawes if nothing happened <laughs> on that one because been there, done that. That's That'll get your attention, and he seems to be fine running it off. Hey, just another day in the Big East, yeah, right? Welcome to conference play. Cody Cowley working on Soriano outside in Defo. Across the lane, and well contested there by Stanley. A couple of early blocks. You're going to be saying that a lot in terms of the contested plays. Missing wow. close. Boy, no one can find anything. What's that, four or five missed layups in the early going? Yeah, we have a little action. Puts it right on the money, just misses the shot. And then a little pushing and shoving again. Right on the doorstep for Montez Mathis. And a foul on Stanley is first. Still no score, more than two and a half minutes in. Two very good defensive teams. Uh, not surprising. And here's a shooter. Wide open Dawes. And connects. And breaks the seal. He's been having trouble shooting that three ball. 8 of 31. 26% in the three Big East games so far. So it is a great relief for his team and the fans. They can sit down after the score. Alexander for Soriano. And a foul. 
where is everybody on defense is probably what St. John's coach Mike Anderson happened, happened to say. Wow. I mean, he was 10 feet wide open. And they're, sometimes they're more difficult to shoot. Guys like to have somebody in their vicinity when they shoot the basketball. And you can mention his numbers and any struggles he has, but that's a guy who played three years at Clemson, led them in three. To the line, Joel Soriano. About a 72% free throw shooter. A guy who has just blossomed across the board this year. When you're having a discussion, Jim, about most improved in the Big East, this guy has to be right near the yeah, top of the list. Sure does. Had eight rebounds against Xavier the other night. It was the first game with less than ten. Since playing Central Connecticut back in November. November 5th. Stopped the streak of four straight double-doubles. Ball knocked away, and Dawes retrieves. Yeah, he was okay to go get that in the backcourt if it made it to the backcourt. Shot clock running down Richmond on a step back. Can't get the roll, and Soriano's there to clear. Alexander comes up. A little hobbled again. Then Xavier, who was banged around a bit. Nice block shot, too, by Richmond. Seton Hall up a point. And Defo on the drive. And missed in close. And a tie up. Yeah, watch teamwork in here. Soriano gets this rebound, so he wants that first. And now watch what he does. He helps his teammate up because he's the point guard. Let him run up the ball up the floor. Maybe Soriano should just turn into the, the point center and run it right up the floor for them. I was going to say. I think he heard you on not getting his 10 rebounds the other night, Jim. He's got four in not even four minutes. Yeah, Alexander took a couple of shots the other night against Xavier, so it's good to see him. The way he plays, he's got to hit the ice bags after each and every game. As aggressive as they come. At least I do when I watch him play. <laughs> good hesitation. Can Rick. beat it inside there, Soriano. Yeah, pretty, pretty dish, but I love the way Soriano has gotten better and better at catching and going real quickly into that shot to get it off not allowing a strip or a block shot and that is how you shoot better than 58 percent from the floor shots like that Dawes again he's got another make one you become a shooter again an entire bench stood up for that for Seton Hall watching that shot in the air couple of early threes that's a great sign season low six points for him against Marquette earlier in the week a lot of post-up action to St. John's. They did that in the second half against Xavier. Played pretty well against them. Making some adjustments. Soriano facing up and knocks down the mid-range. Boy, does that make him difficult to guard if he can knock that one down? And he's worked on that, as we touched on, in terms of improvement in his game. And we've got a long time without a whistle also. Joel Soriano, six. Alamir does six early on in this game. And that'll take us to a break. Tied at six early in a defensive struggle here in Newark. Over in New York City tonight, so it'll be a fun time. Happy New Year, everybody. Indeed, you got a couple teams we mentioned desperate for wins. St. John's has lost two straight after winning its Big East opener against DePaul. Seton Hall 0-3 to start Big East play. First time they've lost their first three conference games in more than a decade. Andre Curbelo's in for the first time for St. John's. Came off the bench. There is Dawes. And finally misses from three. Dawes and Soriano, the only two guys with buckets so far. Wow. Good power move down deep. They're going to him just like they did the second half of the Xavier game. Soriano became a much bigger factor for them. Beautiful little lift of a pass just then, and he gets clobbered a couple of times and finishes it off. Nice look there from Jones as we see him with the pass. That we touched on before, didn't start, but available for today's game and making an impact. Soriano can't get the roll there. He's got all eight St. John's points. Alamir Dawes has all six for Seton Hall on a pair of threes. And a two-point lead for the Johnnies. About six gone opening half. Corbello on the floor, too, for St. John's. There he is in the middle of the floor. And that is Dre Davis who just came in. Good contest there.
That's how it's talked for Dawes. Yeah, so he's wide open on his first look, which gives him a little bit of confidence. Second time down, just a touch of a contest right there, but not enough from St. John's perspective. Norm Mike Anderson, you do not want to get him into a little bit of a role shooting the basketball. I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast how important three-point shots would be in this game. St. John's in a matchup right now after that little break. Three on the timer. Richmond's got a hoist. Comes up short, gets his own. Bell forgot to block him out. Dawes open again. They're playing with fire there. Look at the speed move. And Dave Wusu slows it down for Jones. He's a left-hander. And a good decision not to shoot by both of those players. Bello can be very crafty, but turnovers have been a problem as well for him. Jones with some room and hits a three. Jones with a little bit of a hesitation on that shot right there. But drilled it. And a turnover right back on Seton Hall. So St. John's, after starting 0 for 4, has made its last four shots and has seven straight. And Shaheen Holloway stressed it. Look, you're at home. You're 0-3 in conference play. If you aren't urgent now, when will you be? Yeah, they have to do a couple of things to get the fans involved and keep them involved. Jones working on Davis. Well defended. Knows he's a lefty. Double from Samuel comes, takes it away. Give it up. Uh, didn't get it out to him quick enough. There was a little trip there, I think. Dawes went down, ball is loose. Odie Cali and Curbelo for it, taken by Alexander. Up top, Soriano hammers it home. Maybe that's why he picked him up off the floor at the other end of the court when he got that rebound that we showed early on. Get your point guard up there. And Good results also. Well, he's a guy, you think about it, arrived at St. John's a couple of years ago after spending two years at Fordham and was around 280, 285. You got to lose weight to get in, in great shape for Mike Anderson's system. He's done that. He's transformed his body. And here he is now becoming an all Big East caliber player. And an outstanding start. Yeah, 15 points a game, 12 rebounds. Big time numbers. And now a little switch back. St. John's switching their defenses from a matchup to a man to man this trip. Look at the double team with host with a squeeze. See how many guys are in the middle of the floor. Dawes. Wow. Short that time. So he comes into the game psychologically struggling from shooting the ball from three. Hits his first two, and then I believe it's three straight that he's missed. And now all of a sudden you start to think, is he questioning his shot again? But the only way to get through that is to have confidence as a coach. Put him on the floor, keep him on the floor, and keep him shooting. Davis inside. Off a nice inbounds play, and that stops a string of nine straight for St. John's. So can Seton Hall get a stop? The Johnnies have made five straight. St. John's not in a hurry in their half-court sets. Jones made a three earlier. Give him another! And St. John's has doubled up Seton Hall again. You're going to shoot like that, you probably should get ill every game before <laughs> the game. As I joke with that, but nice stroke to his shot. Very active. Let's take a look at Soriano do his thing. Beautiful 15-foot pull-up when you don't contest him. Uses the body that you talked about to make things happen and running the floor. Nice combination for the big guy as he takes a well-earned rest. He's already in double figures for a 13th time in 15 games this season. Ten points and about eight minutes of action. Odie Cowley looking for Dawes. Knocked away, taken by Curbelo. Hands off for Jones. Counted and one. Uh, that's just an unselfish play by Corbello just then. He could have easily tried to take that all the way, and you watch how St. John's takes a 10-point lead going to... So clearly he's testing his guys. He wants them to be more physical against St. John's. He knew this was going to be a physical game, a defensive-type game. When you start looking at numbers, though, points in the paint for St. John's, 10-2, to two, so there's one thing. Seton Hall is only 3 of 14 from the floor. That's the second thing. And St. John's, it's a small number, but 2 for 3 from the three-point line already.
A team that came in at 31 and a half percent second worst in the Big East The worst is Seton Hall Jones can't complete the three-point play 10-point lead as we roll towards 11 and a half to go in the opening half here in Newark. Yeah, you've got to drive by somebody to get things going. This is a big shot for Harris. Callback three for Harris. Another guy who's been struggling from long range. No points in two straight games. He's missed his last 11 threes now. Jones in the lane. Good contest there from Trey Jackson who's come on. Try to get it down the floor and beat them before St. John sets up for defense. Nice pass. Jackson going up, knocked away by Curbelo. You know, Curbelo and Alexander have just unbelievable hands defensively. And, the, and they really know where one another is on the floor. You know, as they can cut back on their turnovers, which once in a while causes them some problems. But for the most part, nice backcourt with some activity. Curbelo comes down and, as you said before, a little tricky with the basketball. Alexander second, Curbelo third in the Big East in steals for a team that leads the conference in that category. Nine a game, steals, big number. Seton Hall three for 15 from the floor. Cody Cali for Jackson, extra feed for Dawes. And he's got a third three. So you keep shooting. Shane Holloway and his coaching staff probably got into his head and just said, listen, we need you to shoot the ball when you're open. You'll start making him as he started earlier in this game, and he's going to shoot his way back into it, hopefully for Seton Hall. A.J. Storr, true freshman, misses, and a Wusu the rebound. Mathis connects. Cabello with the simple pass again, and that allows them to get into their full court action. Harris is bumped by Isaiah Naiwi. It's his first. One of the things that happens, and it's happening a little bit here for Seton Hall on the offensive end of the floor, they know that St. John's is very aggressive at the perimeter. And a lot of times what happens, a team comes down and they stop before the perimeter, and they start thinking to themselves, you know what, it's going to be hard to get something going. So Shaheen Holloway's team has to put the ball on the floor, maybe go buy somebody, keep the ball hopping. But see, now it's just going around the perimeter saying, these guys are good defensively, we're not attacking them at all. So right here. Richmond attacks there, and with the left puts yeah, it in. And you get something good off it, so you have to pick up your pace just a little bit to keep them working. Maybe go side to side with the ball, but that was a good execution driving it. Well, he averaged 22 in their first two Big East games, held to nine in the loss to Marquette. And this from Ade Wusu, good rebound by Richmond. Wow, did he get tripped? No, he just fell. No call. Store hands off, Mathis the reverse. Good time to reverse. Fans don't like the no call on that one. I was going to say, voicing their displeasure a little bit. Pressure in the backcourt again from St. John's. The Mike Anderson staple. There is Richmond. Give him one of the house. Yeah, when he plays at the top of his game, they're a different team. And comes up hobbling a little bit there. Here's his first drive. The extension off the glass with the left. And then here he goes through the lane, uh, coming out of the lane, I should say. Looked like he was hurt for a second, but he hops back up. And some more action with him, keeping his body going at the other end. Little crossover with a left-to-right dribble. And walk away with three. So Seton Hall back within eight points. Five for Richmond in quick succession. Curbelo's pass deflected, taken by Harris. Seton Hall wants to push. Harris is open. Another good look. That, uh, another good look and a good looking shot, too. Mathis. Good recognition by Mathis there, recognizing the lane. And there's Alexander flying in. Yeah, and I love the way Alexander throws his body first and then finishes it off second. Nobody gets in his way. An easier shot, but he will take some body contact to finish when he has to. His first field goal. He's averaging a career low nine and a half points this year. A guy who does so many of the little things. Former Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Richmond looking. And now it is Dre Davis spinning baseline and a push. Yep, pushing a hold. So Seton Hall go to the blocks early on in this game a few times, and they got away from it a bit. But here's that hold and grab. 
Whatever you want to call it, it's a foul. And a Wusu picks it up. So Endefo comes back in out there with Harris, Dawes, Samuel, and Richmond for Seton Hall. Down nine with 8.32 to go in this opening half. Dawes with three early makes from three. And Samuel is hacked. Well, he's had a beautiful quick pass right across the board there for, for Dawes. Delivered it away from Soriano defensively. Giving Samuel an opportunity to catch and go with it. Well done. Seventh team foul on St. John's. So Seton Hall will be in the bonus rest of the half. That doesn't always mean something great for this team. Right. that has really struggled at the free throw line. That they have, yeah. But I think what Shaheen Holloway has probably said in his last break with these guys is let's try to test the paint a little bit more. Get to the line and hopefully we'll make something. Diary Samuel, native of Montreal, averaging a career high 10.2 per game and shooting it a career best 70% at the free throw line. And two straight double dub, uh, double point games, 11 and 14 in his last two. He's a guy that Gene Holloway says he's so nice off the floor, we need him to be angrier on the court. Seton Hall did a stop. A turnover again. Yeah, that was Richmond who got a hand on it. Careless pass for the post. It's Harris to the bucket and finishes through contact. Yeah, and that may help Harris too, getting to see that ball go in. That was a tough drive. Another one like we saw Richmond earlier in this game with the left-handed extension. Crowd trying to come alive. Down low, Soriano got position on Samuel, misses and tips it up and in. Not only the first time was it a quick shot down deep, but also how about that second explosion with the tip? He has really conditioned himself very well. 12 points, six rebounds already in this first half. And the lead back to eight for St. John's. Continue to try to get it down low, pushed out about 15, now further out. Samuel working on Soriano and a foul. So post up a little bit, get the ball going to the basket. And here comes the drive. A big intent. That's a big move here for Harris to see it go through. Defense. Terrific overall rapport with his players and wants them all to block out on this free throw. And just focus on the middle of the floor, but don't forget a lot about the baseline. Think about his teams and the way they play with pace, the way he learned from Nolan Richardson, his mentor. Tyrese Samuel is at the line. And knocks down the first. So Seton Hall is in the bonus for the rest of the half. Can they take advantage now is the question. Three for four at the line so far to start. Samuel, who had nine points. I should say 11 points in 19 minutes against Marquette earlier this week. Misses there. Lead is seven points. It's been as many as 10 in this first half for St. John's. A tough drive by Mathis comes up short. Rebound Samuel. Yeah, good stay by Samuel just then and well defended on that drive. To stay away from the foul. Richmond left open for three. Wow. A little odd motion to that shot just then. Soriano in the mid-range again, and he has the touch going today. Yeah, the first one we saw was a standstill to shoot it when you catch it. That one we we see him with his size catching it on the move and pulling up. Not easy for a big guy to do that when you're looking at 6'11", six, six 260. 14 points and has missed just one of his seven shots. A matchup again, maybe a flash to the middle of the floor. Once again, it's going around. There's the middle of the floor. See if something good happens. And Defa wanted a post on Carvello. Got it to him. Yeah, just get it to the middle of the floor. That's the, that's the big spot where you can go against that matchup zone because the front line doesn't see you slip in behind them. So if you're Seton Hall defensively now, how do you slow down St. John shooting 54%? Well, you just have to, well, they're switching defenses too now. So they're going into a zone. They're going to kind of squeeze the middle of the floor and double team the blocks, I'm sure. Stanley working there on Defo. There's a block. Samuel came across for the double team. Nothing new for Casey and Defo. 
Drives into the lane, drop off for Samuel. Waits patiently, and another foul. Good gap at two. Starting to get a little bit more aggressive. This is a nice pass over the top. And Duffo goes quickly with it, too. That's what I like to see, you know, in terms of the bigs, getting that ball and going fast with it rather than taking your time, unless you double team like Samuel was the last trip. Second foul on Stanley. As Tyrese Samuel misses again. Three things you didn't need to know about Tyrese Samuel. T-Bone, solid nickname. Flash is always a good superhero. What's your favorite superhero? Well, I'm too old for superheroes. <laughs> I figured you still had one. <laughs> well, then again, Steve Shear, my producer, was right up there with Batman and Robin back in the old days. There you go. <laughs> Second free throw is in. So Samuel's three of six at the line. The lead is a half dozen for St. John's. And in the matchup, they fell asleep. Get away with it, though. Mathis is yeah. fired. That'll be over the back on Soriano. Soriano's left hand, little bit of a push to get just a little better positioning down low. And watch the left left hand, little extension right there. It's not much, but it's enough to get Samuel's body going forward. Good call by Jeff Clark. So Samuel goes right back to the free throw line, and we talked about it. They've been in the bonus for a while already. This will be free throws eight and nine upcoming. Four for seven for him now. Seton Hall is a team this year south of 67% at the line, last in the Big East. And they have just killed themselves in a handful of Big East games. You look at what they've done, I mean, on a couple occasions against Marquette, missed 10 free throws. Against Xavier, missed nine. It, you make those, Sheen yeah. Hollis, is, you got a couple wins. Official Nate Farrell getting in the middle of a few players out there just to calm things down a little bit. Two good ones there. Crowd starting to get back into it. Down to a four-point game. And a Wusu with Curbelo, Mathis, Jones, and Soriano for St. John's. The lead little, is four. It's been as many as ten. Yeah, a little switch up again. A little show at half court just to take a few more seconds off the clock. And now St. John's is doing what Seton Hall did about four or five minutes ago. Just waiting it out, taking their time. Nicely done defensively. There is Odie Kelly spinning in the lane and lays it in. Now it's the, a two-point game. Now the fans have arrived. Forcing the action defensively. Shaheen of Holloway's team. He did it with St. Peter's University last year. For success with his teams. Absolutely. Seton Hall started two for 13. They've made seven of their past ten shots. They're back within a deuce. And this crowd reignited here in Newark. A capacity crowd here at the Prudential Center. And another knock away. That's a foul. It's on Odie Cali. So they try a little squeeze action. Alexander looking for the call. Not much of one. A little deflection in there. Maybe a little smack on the hand. Only the fourth team foul on Seton Hall, so they've done a good job of guarding without fouling. You see how St. John's is just kind of surveying what's going on, but they forget that the clock is working against them right now. Under 10 on the shot clock. Mathis. Not that time. Jeff really got out there pretty quickly. And a steal. Jones hammers it home again. Dawes lost sight of him just for a second. Enough to convert that into a miscue and a dunk. Jones with 10 off the bench. It was a game time decision due to illness. Odie Cali drills the three. And Seton Hall needed that one in a big way. Back within a point. We roll towards four to go first half. On the fly, Alexander misses. Soriano gobbles up another rebound. And he's hacked inside. 
Well, these guys are getting a little testy out there on New Year's Eve. Yeah, 10 points in seven minutes off the bench, by the way. Just looks so comfortable on the floor for this seven minutes that he's been out there. Well, he spent two years at DePaul, an intra-conference transfer. Came over in big part to play with his good friend, Joel Soriano. Those two have spent time together on the Dominican Republic national team and had a prior relationship. Big reason why he wanted to come here and compete for a Big East title. Inside four to play opening half. Again, the lead for St. John's has been as many as ten. Seton Hall making a push. It's Mathis on a baseline drive. Rebound Richmond. Seton Hall's last lead was six to four. About four and a half minutes in. They can take it back right here. Dawes has three threes. Give him a fourth. Seton Hall's got the lead. That one was with confidence, too, because when you come off that screen on the left side of the floor, a right-handed shooter gets the plant his inside foot. And Dawes did just that, planted the left, good elevation, and a beautiful finish. A 13-2 run to take a two-point lead. David Jones, watched by Harris. It's Alexander in the lane. Dump off feed, and another finish in tight for Soriano, who's got 16 points. And yeah, somehow Alexander squeezes that one through, too. Dawes working on Mathis drop off to Samuel and powers it up and through Dawes showing some confidence same with Samuel for Seton Hall two guys that they need to get on track and playing good solid basketball this afternoon the Hall has made its last five Jones in the lane that's tough yeah sometimes out of control but at the very last part of that move he can he kind of pulled it all together, got the shoulders squared away. 12 points on five for six shooting in nine minutes off the bench. Rolling towards two to play in the first half. And Defo, size mismatch on Mathis, takes advantage. Yeah, and he knows he's quick enough and he's strong enough. A little fast break here. And ahead to Jones, beat everyone down the floor, blew the layup. It's loose for Alexander. And now Mathis floats it in. What a play by Alexander just to get down the floor just then. It's off the leg of David Jones. Minute 46 to go in the first half. Couple of longtime Big East rivals. Tied up at 37. You know, it looked early. St. John's had the 10 point lead. You started to wonder can they pull away? Not in this rivalry with the way these games yeah, typically go. That's for sure. They. They get up close and fuzzy when they play one another, these two teams, in terms of the defensive effort. Quite candidly, I'm surprised they got it to 37. I thought it might be down closer to 30 in the first half. And Defo with Richmond, Dawes, Samuel, and Harris. In a tie game at 37 and 90 seconds to go in the first half in Newark. Dawes curling. Step back three. Samuel tracks it down. Harris left open. Well, they're getting their three-point shooters some open looks. Inside Soriano. Second try won't go. Rebound Samuel. Pressure in the backcourt from Jones. Pass here just to get it across by Harris. To Harris. There he is with the left. Samuel tips it up and in. Now Samuel going from one end to the other. Really a terrific effort so far from him. He's Nine breathing point, pretty hard too. 9.7 rebounds. Inside a minute first half. Seton Hall's lead is two. Jones tipped out of bounds by Richmond. It'll stay on this end. on the timer for Curbelo to trigger in. So about a 
25 or so second game clock shot clock difference and a wusu has his pass tipped now three on the time to go for a slip to the basket on this play or get it to a guard who can put it on the deck possibly for one dribble to get a shot off 26.9 game clock three on the shot clock plenty of time to catch and shoot Bell the inbounder again Soriano back to him Might have been blocked by Samuel good and a shot clock violation. Yeah, good reaction by Samuel. He read that perfectly Get it in get it to the guard See Hall can sit on this one right here Shot clock dark 20 seconds to play in the opening half And Dari Richmond Watched out high by A.J. Storr. It's inside 10. To go at 7. Here's 7. They want to go right now. Richmond with 5, with 4. Pulls back. Tries a 3. Bullseye! And you can't finish the half any better if you're Seton Hall. A big-time lift going into the break. With a five-point lead, but more importantly, their confidence has gone. Con lead early in the second half at the Cintas Center. What a job Sean Miller has done with Xavier in year one. Yeah, fabulous job. And I think what you're going to see, if you thought that first half was aggressive, watch this second half. The tempo and the aggressive play has to pick up a bit. Samuel had a terrific first half, 9.7 rebounds. That's tipped out of bounds. I think Samuel has to use that positioning there and just get a little jump hook in the middle of the lane. So Richmond Dawes, Samuel and Defo Odi Cali to start for Seton Hall. And Alexander Stanley and a Wusu Mathis Soriano. Again, David Jones will come off the bench in the second half as he did in the first. Alamir Dawes shot the ball well in the first half. That's why they're staying close to him. And he's got a fifth three. Stanley was right there for a second, then he backtracked just a touch. You have to know that scouting report. Forced Dawes to put it on the deck and go towards the basket. The way he's shooting that three now. Matches the season high with five threes. Did that against Wagner. Stanley misses, got it back. Inside Alexander, contested at the rim well by Indefo. He may have gotten a piece on that first shake. Nice look here. Too far under the basket. See the way they closed on him right there. That's what you have to do. Force him to put it on the floor. Nifty feed to Samuel and finishes. And the Seton Hall lead double digits for the first time this afternoon. And Dawes showing a little blend of putting it on the floor and also shooting the basketball. That was a fabulous pass. Mathis could cut off the ball. Missed a bunny. The depot defensively a factor again. Cody Cali giving room against Soriano. Missed in tight. Samuel powers it up and a foul. As Dawes turns the corner and watch he gets a lot of good red shirts to kind of squeeze along the baseline at him And a good find and one of the things that goes underrated too a lot of those times is Samuel found the ball I was looking for a seam against the defenders and made himself a Available in a position where he could just get the ball and go with it simple basketball Samuel at the free throw line is now six for nine as Jones checks in along with Carbello, Stanley and Mathis exit. Three fouls, by the way, on Stanley. Samuel misses there. And the rebound to Jones. So when St. John's came out of the gates hot, what would you see in why Seton Hall could at least hang around so they make their push? I think they made adjustments, you know, switching defenses a little bit, but focusing on getting the ball in the paint area, just like St. John's is trying a little bit down here. Nice cut there by Soriano. Beautiful. He's made all three of his mid-range J's and has 18 points. Once again, just like Samuel down the other end, the big guy, make yourself available so the guard can get the ball to you easier. And then it makes your life that much easier, too. Nice dope, little hesitation screen. Blocked away by Soriano. He's a terrific shot blocker, too. Number seven in the Big East in rejections. Yeah, I'm not so sure this one had a chance. 
with Dawes. He was a little bit more extended on the left side to really reach out and get to the right side of that glass just then. Well defended. Upstairs. Oh, should have caught it. You think that's one he brings down with two? Oh, if he brings it with two, he gets a layup because they wouldn't have been able to react to it. Basic rather than fancy sometimes gets the job done. Kick ball. Now the three stars for Seton Hall here today. Dawes, those five three-pointers tying a season best. Samuel in double figures. And Kadari Richmond with eight had that three-pointer to beat the buzzer at halftime. Watch the way St. John's is splashing somebody into the middle. Nice hands there. Soriano got it though. Samuel to the deck. And wins it back for Seton Hall. Richmond. Dawes has room to fire. I think that's one you want to settle down just a touch. Nobody out of the offensive class. Alexander for the trailer. And a Wusu, and that's snared by Richmond. Yeah, St. John's is trying their best to close this floor down and get it within seven feet shorter, but Seat Hall is defending. Oh, how about Richmond behind the back, a whirling dervish for two. Might be time to talk things over if you're Mike Anderson. That was sneaky. 11-point lead, double figures now for Richmond. They are defending. The Pirates are really picking it up defensively. Carbello can't hit, out of bounds to Seton Hall. Soriano with the tip out just then. Go up that imaginary ladder, nice little floater in the middle of the lane, and you notice that seven feet and in, nobody's there to block that shot. You go into three feet, and that's where Soriano was waiting. St. John's one of eight to start the second half, and Seton Hall's lead, which was five at halftime, has now grown to 11 its largest. They want to post Samuel again on Soriano. His face up jumper is true. Well, they wanted to get a little more aggressive out there, and he sure is looking to do that. Alexander to respond. Yeah, Can't do it. Yeah, I think if you're Seton Hall at this point, you force the game on the perimeter for St. John's. Make them shoot their way back into it. And it'll stay with Seton Hall. St. John's only at 31 and a half percent from the three-point strike coming in So now when you have this lead that Seton Hall does Mike Anderson's team has to hit a couple outside shots right, right now with UConn trying to hand the Huskies their first loss now Sean Miller's done a terrific job with his team You know I had their game Wednesday They just battled the whole night long against St. John's for a tough earned win over at Connor Seca Arena 3-0 to start conference play for the first time since 2017-2018. That was when they won the Big East regular season title. Well, Shaheen Holloway's team trailed by 10 early. They trailed by 9, Jim, with 7 to go in the first half. Since then, they've outscored St. John's 32-10. to And the second half, not a good second half start for St. John's. 1-9 of nine from the floor. Kadari Richmond. He's been in attack mode today. It's Endefo against Jones in the lane. Peter Watson scores. He's quicker than most people think. And he defends, but there if he puts a little offensive push on for Seton Hall, really helps. Jones muscles it up and off. Thing hung on the rim for a minute, and then Alexander got it back. St. John's needs something to stop the bleeding. That's out of bounds. And he'll stay with St. John's after this. Use your speed on the open floor. Defender comes out of not good defensive position. He just attack and a pretty little flip shot. Go. The imagination of the entire nation. First New Jersey school to reach the Sweet 16 since Shaheen Holloway's Pirates when he was a point guard in 2000. It was just a magical run. Fortunate enough to broadcast all four of those games, and it was just, you know, you, you, you just never thought that it was going to happen. First half against Kentucky, they played competitive, and then all of a sudden it took over, and it took over. Murray State was a very good team also, as was Purdue last year. Carbello on the fly, drops in that floater. St. John's within 13 points. Question now is, can they stop Seton Hall? That's one way to stop them, get a little action, and there's a grab out front. 
Jones. Keep in mind, St. John's will come at you with different variations. Sheen Holloway knows that. They will pick up full court. They will trap. They will bait you into stopping at half court with the basketball and going after you. So Seton Hall's guards really have to be careful with the basketball and conscious of that, but attack it at the same time. Alexander, Curbelo, Adewusu, Soriano, and Jones. For St. John's team that led by 10 early in the first half and now trails by 13. Shot clock to 10 on Jones. Working on Indefo and a reach in. It's rare that you see him lean in with his shoulders and his waist bent going towards the, the offensive player. Second foul on Casey Indefo. The second on Seton Hall in this second half. Again, St. John's has dropped two straight Big East games after its conference opener win against DePaul. Seton Hall 0-3 to start conference play for the first time in more than a decade. And a Wusu step back triple. That's what they'll give them, right? They'll force the ball away from the basket, take their chances on the percentages with the lead. Seton Hall was 2 for 13 to start the game. They're now 50% for the game. Yeah, and a little chippy play developing right now. Offensive foul. It's Curbelo stepping in to draw the charge. In order for him to get to this spot, he has to get there in a hurry. I always look at it and I just say to myself, who created the contact on the play? And it looks like Samuel created that contact. Well, give Curbelo credit. He's got two points in 16 minutes, but five assists and some terrific defense. And I like the fact that Seton Hall is kind of throwing a different look at them defensively also. Not letting St. John settle in against one look defensively also. And a Wusu in the lane for Soriano in a foul. It's on Samuel, and that's his second. Fourth team foul for Seton Hall. What they do not want to do with a lead of 13 points is get themselves boxed into a corner with foul problems in terms of individuals, but even more importantly, the bonus and the bonus plus, double bonus and turn us into a St. John's free throw shooting contest in like the last eight minutes of the game. So Soriano's now got 19 and nine, working towards his 12th double-double, leads the nation with 11. We were talking about his body transformation, Jim. Showed up at St. John's a couple years ago after transferring from Fordham at 280, got down to 260. His roommate, Dylan Adewusu, used to say, I had to lock the refrigerator at night because he would eat so much. Well, here he is now in incredible shape, and we've talked about his ability to get points in transition. It's Dawes. Good no shot there by Dawes. Don't force it. And the 10 on the shot clock, so now they have to get some activity. Gets a good, solid perimeter defender, it's Alexander. Richmond on the fly. Tip won't go. That shot clock should not have gone off. I'm gonna reach in on Indefo. It's his third. Five team fouls now, though. Check that. Tyree Samuel's third. So in the first half, it was Seton Hall getting in the bonus early. Yep. This may flip it around. That was a big reason why they carved back into the game. Wow. Bad pass a, by Carbell. Had a good decision there. Trying to chip away at a 12-point lead. You're going to come down and make sure you get a good look. And we know his passing ability. That's one of the areas he's got to improve. Turning it over too much. Richmond against Alexander. Now a switch with Jones. Nice Nifty ball. feed inside for Indefo. Really good positioning and cut by Indefo, though. Make that an easier pass than what it looked like. Beautiful delivery. So that is taking a step or two away from the shooter. Soriano. Backing down on Samuel, stood his ground. Still plenty of time with six on the shot clock. Five for Curbelo. On a baseline drive, it's Jones' corner pop. Not that time. Not a good set for St. John's. Well defended by Seton Hall. Good reaction to the dribbler. 
And a good slack off to the three-point shooters. Cody Cali got caught underneath. Yeah. Forced that one a little bit. Good challenge here. Alexander on the run. Richmond pulled the chair on him. Yeah, he did. And Alexander just kept going. And Defo on the move. Blocked by Jones and St. John's can run. And that's great shot selection so far in the last three trips. Curbello. A, a little better on that one. That was pretty. His second field goal. Lead a dozen for Seton Hall. Stop the dribble there. And Defo with space. Poked from behind. Samuel got it back, reversed it up and in. I don't know if he's going to get an assist because Alexander shoveled that one from behind right to his hands. Give another to Posh. I'm at 16 for Samuel on 5 for 7 from the floor. Jones, baseline drive. And Defo played it well again. And Dawes out of the pack with it. Coast to coast to lay it in. Wow, did he live... Curbelo just in his tracks as if he was in deep snow just then blew right by him Largest lead of the game for Seton Hall at 16 Jones Soriano lost it inside three on two if they hurry Richmond all the oh. way Woo. That would have brought the house down here in Newark what a run for Seton Hall right now. The Defo a little cut for the basket. Nobody home for the finish. But the question becomes how quickly do they move him along? Really, really have to be careful in terms of not advancing him faster than what the medical staff would say. And I'm sure Villanova knows that already. They don't need me telling them that. So Kadari Richmond at the free throw line and knocks down the first. He's got 11. Three things you need to know about him. Sports hero Bo Jackson, that's a good one. The Beastie Boys. And inspiration is mom. You know, his nickname, Jim, is Cooks, because he would cook opponents on the blacktops around the city where he grew up. They couldn't guard him. There you go. St. John's having trouble guarding him today. 17-point Seton Hall lead. Notice that have come out with that three-quarter tra three trap. Slowing down St. John's, giving him a different look. Nice answer, though. Cabello along the baseline with the floater. He's got a couple of those runners here in the last few minutes. So how does St. John's get back in this? Well, the way St. John's has to get back in it is at the defensive end. You'll see them switching their defenses. But Seat Hall is really just playing good, solid half-court base basketball with Davis scoring on that drive. His second field goal for the Louisville transfer. And a Wusu misses there. And remember that eight straight misses from three for yeah, St. John's. Remember that St. John's has struggled all season long with the shooting of the three-point shot. 30 point 31 percent coming in. Ranks 287 nationally. So Seton Hall knows that as well as anybody. St. John's is gonna win this game. They gotta get back into it with the three. Oh Davis, that's crafty in the lane. Couple of buckets back to back for him. And the lead is 19. St. John's just really seems comfortable and confident the offensive end against a team that knows how to play defense. No question about it. See the indecision right now. What are we up against? What do we got to do with the basketball? And good close and goes the other way. And there's a souvenir in the second row. Yeah, so here's the open floor. Notice nobody around. Good movement without the basketball just to clear the back eight feet. And then back to the basket, little spin one way, you guard me that way, and I'm going to get that little moving jump hook. Dre Davis. A consensus four-star recruit. He committed to, committed to Nebraska initially, then decommitted, signed with Louisville, played two years there. Averaged about seven and a half points. Comes with his brother Tay here to Seton Hall. They were watching that NCAA tournament run, decided, hey, why not go play for him? And it has been a great fit. Here he is on a runner. What? Let's get their last six. Seton Hall looks like a better team than the 0-3 conference record that they have right now. You know, they've played a tough schedule this season so far. Boy, and this defense is just reactive. Mathis, there's just nowhere to go. Yeah, watch each pass. 
See how close they get? They cut it off. Good call from the officials, but they are really on top of things in an instant. There's no delay. Like, here comes the pass to my guy. Now I have to play defense. As the ball's getting there, they're readying themselves to play D. You're going to see some full court action if they make a free throw. A couple right here. Foul on Dawes. And I think if you're Seton Hall, if they come at you with this blitz, don't get don't get yourself in the corner for a double team, but go past it. And then once you make one pass, the full court action attack at the other end of the floor. Don't play passively, even though you're up. By 21. Samuel back in and Defo exits. Another free throw coming for Montez Mathis. The Rutgers transfer. Spent three years there to start his career as a Baltimore native. Played high school and AU ball with Emmanuel Quickly of the New York Knicks, formerly Kentucky. What a great young player he is. They gave 37 the other night against Dallas. Oh, a little tippet breakdown by Samuel. Well, that's if you're going to start a comeback, has to begin there. Now you can set your pressure. For yeah, here comes the full court. Be careful of the corners at half court because they'll double team you there. They roll towards eight to go, second half. 19 point Seton Hall lead. After trailing early by 10. They're plus 14 in the second half so far. They roll towards eight to go. Yep. Dawes was on the sideline. And one of the things, you know, you look up, you say eight minutes left, and you're up a big number right here. It's so do you milk the clock or not? I think you cautiously milk it but sometimes you fall into a trap offensively that you're not aggressive enough so it's a blend you don't want to come down and take one five seconds but you surely don't want to really work it to the five seconds left on the clock either Curbelo's gotten it going offensively he has another runner there great extension two over Samuel's hand now all of a sudden I think reaching on Mathis Andre Curbelo didn't score in the first half. He's got eight here in the second. St. John's trying to hang around. Fall into the complacency trap right now and lay back a little bit for three or four minutes, and then all of a sudden you look up and you got a you know a 10-point game rather than a double-digit 17-point lead. Now he talked to us before the matchup about his team being able to play 40 minutes. They've had flashes, they've had stretches. A tough start to this game. Lead is 17. It's been as many as 21. Can they finish this out for their first conference win? Kadari Richmond. Down the lane he goes. Off the window and in again. He recognized that mismatch too in the double team. It was him versus Soriano. And I think immediately he recognized, hey, I can go by this 6'11 guy. Flip one in. Good decision. Mathis. Soriano tried to throw it off the leg of Davis, taken by Odie Cali. So when nothing's there, you don't want to rush yourself up the floor. The cutter is Davis for a two-handed jam. Nice delayed break just then. Don't rush, be under control, and make solid passes. Seton Hall's made its last seven from the floor. Curbelo drops off for Stanley. Can't call that a total flush, but he got it to go. So a 19-point game with 6.40 left. You think about St. John's, the 11-1 start. They've dropped two straight. A schedule that's not the strongest. Mike Anderson knew the importance of trying to get this one to get back to 500 in league play. Shot clock to 10. It's Davis against Stanley. That's, well, that's okay because they were aggressively looking for some action throughout that set. That is a Mathis three. And that's why you play off of it. You play the percentages now for Shaheen Holloway. His guys seem to know the scouting report pretty well. Soriano, by the way, got that rebound yeah. moments ago. He's got his 12th double-double. Yeah, one thing to know the scouting report, the other part of it is executing it. Richmond. And a foul. Well, you've talked all day about the percentages and the way things work out. Oftentimes, numbers balance, right? Right. You got a St. John's team that started three for five from three, exploded. They've missed nine in a row since. 
Yeah, and percentages don't lie, right? You know, they're coming in 31 and a half percent of the season. And now on the road, especially playing a conference game, very, very difficult to shoot your way back into it when the team, Seton Hall in that case, defensively knows exactly what they want to do execution wise. And a Wusu and Niowi will check back in for St. John's. If Seton Hall is going to continue this, and you figure they're on their way here to their first conference win, Kadari Richmond has to be a huge piece of it. And Shaheen Holloway has talked about it. Again, a guy where you've seen it in bursts. You've seen today what he's done. A guy with all the talent in the world. How does he become more consistent? I, I think the one thing that he has to do is, obviously, points are nice when you're scoring points. Harris with the bump there along the way. But really, it's that confidence up going up and down the floor. Don't show hesitation. Show confidence. Show control. And help your teammates and be willing to take some of the responsibility when things go wrong. It's a one and one for St. John. Shaheen Holloway not too happy about that. No, but Seton, Seton Hall did a pretty good job, though. We were talking about getting themselves into team foul trouble. And they made it up to six minutes with really not getting to the bonus. So... Overall, Shaheen has to be somewhat happy with that. Coaches are never happy until the game is over, though. Well, Mike Anderson's got to be happy with the second half he's gotten from Andre Carbello. Came off the bench for the first time this season today, and he has put in 10 second-half points. Here comes the full-court action again. It's 19 again with 5.44 to go. And they lob it into Richmond. Numbers if they go quick. Samuel left uncovered. Uh, I don't know if Shaheen wanted that one, but they'll take the follow-up. He'll probably say it was a pass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back to 21 again. What a second half for Seton Hall. Outscoring the Johnnies by 16. Curbelo, catch and shoot. That's an area of his game has just not been there in his career. About a 20% three-point shooter. Odie Cali tied up, going up. It finds Harris. And he still can't buy one from three-point range. He's missed 14 in a row. Alley -oop. And the conversion there for Stoll. Gabella with another good pass. 10.7 assists. Now this crowd has quieted down because their team has been so in control in the second half. That's 4.45 to go. Post up action. Reaching on Ade Wusu. Only their fifth team foul. It's his third. Dre Davis. Working on Niowi, got it to go again. How about that little extension there to get it over the big guy down deep defensively? Little tricky jump hook type of move, but he had to extend that and pull it back a touch. Ten of his 12 in the second half. And double figures for an eighth time this year in 11 games. Soriano and Samuel. Well, look at the closure on him now. Steps through, that's yeah. some patience. Yeah, there. really good patience. You'll live with that, though, if you're Seton Hall right now, because he had to burn six seconds just pivoting. <laughs> Not really in a hurry right now, Seton Hall. So it's that blend, as I touched on. Don't race up the floor and take a bad shot. But about 12 seconds, get into it as if you're going to aggressively go after it. Better than 62% in the second half for the Hall. Samuel. Good help. Not a Wusu. Good job there. Lead is 19. So seen all in control right now, but look at this. Watch this extension shot. Pull it up and a little bit away with the right hand. An impressive second half performance. What has stuck out to you the most about the way that Seton Hall has closed out this game? I think their consist consistency is the most important part of this. You know, they've pretty much done this with limiting turnovers at 11 right now, which is a pretty good number if they can. They've been t turning it over 15 and a half times per game. Oh, I don't know if he got that off. Nope. Just after. You look at the numbers across the board. 
You can see that 63% shooting clip from the floor for Seton Hall in the second half. And yeah, that tells a story too. 0 for 7 from 3 for St. John's in the second stanza. That pass Carbello taken away by a Richmond. Against Nywe to the cup and two more. When he puts his head down, he's tough to stop. 19. It's Soriano. Richmond for Davis. Open triple. And over the top. Now St. John's 9 for 27 in the second half from the floor. We mentioned the seven missed threes for Mike Anderson's team. Different story than Xavier where they started so slowly and finished so strong. Just felt like they ran out of gas a little bit. It's a store three miss. Soriano jams at home. He's got 23 and 11. He's done his part. Nice little pass right there to Harris just to break that trap. And you pull it back out. Good smart move by Harris and Seton Hall. Shane Holloway over there directing traffic. Probably want him to go with just about 10 seconds. It's Richmond. Samuel a three. Wow. And Dawes the rebound. That kind of second half. Yeah, you buy a little more time right now with the shot clock going back to 20. And you... Do the same exercise now. Little under 10, you want to go with it. Rolling towards two to play. Dawes turns the corner. That's goal That's goal yep. Well executed. Can't say anything else, but that was well ex executed just then. They get the second chance. They work the clock and bolts the first possession and then the second possession under 10 seconds. Taking a lot of time off and can't do it any better. You know, it's hard to call a game a must-win when it's your fourth conference game. Kadari Richmond looking at a nice hand. How important, though, was this kind of performance for Seton Hall moving forward? Well, it gives you a little belief, right? They, you know, they, they believe in their system. They believe in Shaheen Holloway, and it gives them a belief that, hey, you know, if we stay with it, good things will happen for us. Nade Wusu. Unfortunately, when January rolls in, the conference doesn't go home. Still a lot of conference games. It's off the mark for Curbelo. I like the way they forced the action for St. John's away from the basket. Dawes and one. And one final exclamation point here in Newark. On a New Year's Eve party for the Hall. Yeah, one thing we mentioned in the first part of this game, Dawes came out and hit a couple of three-pointers to get his confidence up. He's mixed it up with a little a few drives to the basket. Here he goes right now using that body action, drifting, showing the ball, then pulling it back with the left. Nice effort by him this afternoon. So he completes the three-point play, and he matches a career high with 22, does Alamir Dawes. Eight for 14 from the floor, five for 10 from three. And he will get a nice applause here. What a performance that was. Four first half threes for Dawes. In comes David Gabriel, freshman walk on from North Bergen, New Jersey. Herbello skips it. It's at a Wusu back in at home plus one. Good cross-court corner look. He doesn't know how to play any other way, but aggressively and physically. Good finish. He and Pasha Alexander, high school teammates at our Savior Lutheran. Guy who's had some nice games for Mike Anderson, but had been inconsistent. There's Posh. Tough day offensively for him. One of six from the floor and two points. And 
St. John's team, we talked about it. With the schedule they had, you got to take advantage of opportunities when they come. Lost a 22nd-ranked Xavier, the second quad one game they've had, and now they're going to lose a third straight. They roll towards the final minute. And what's going to be a convincing first conference win for Seton Hall. That's a foul inside as Dre Davis is hacked by Curbelo. Now, if you're Mike Anderson thinking about St. John's and getting this thing turned around, what do you think the biggest couple of keys are going to be? The defense is very consistent, even though Seton Hall picked it apart pretty nicely this afternoon. they got to work on that shooting from the outside, and if it's not working, they better get to the free throw line because that's the combination. Teams will scout and get ready for teams in this conference. They know the conference when they're scouting teams, and if you're not shooting the ball well from the outside, the three-point line, you're going to get a plenty of looks, that's for sure. Free throw good for Jerry Davis. And we have a final 83-73 Xavier over UConn. So we're down to two unbeatens remaining in college basketball. What a win for Sean Miller and the Musketeers at home at the Cintas Center. And UConn and Dan Hurley take their first loss. Well, Seton Hall's going to get win number one in conference play. And Shaheen Holloway, as a head coach of his alma mater, will get his first Big East win. It's a foul on the floor. 37 and a half to play. You think about this from a Seton Hall perspective, Jim. There's a lot now you can build upon if you're Shaheen Holloway. The defense has been good. We know what kind of playmakers they have, and, and they made a couple shots today to go with it. Yeah, and I, I think it comes down to we've, we saw Dawes start, as I just touched on, confident player. be nice to get Harris to get his shot back and shoot the ball from long range the way he's capable of doing it. I have to admit, you know, with Samuel, I mean, if they could continue to keep him aggressive at both ends of the floor, I mean, not get in foul trouble, could be good things around the corner for 2023. Tied a season high with 16. About a five-second game clock, shot clock difference. The jumper is missed from Colby King. True freshman from Pompano Beach, Florida. Our updated Big East standings, Xavier 4-0 handing UConn its first loss of the season. That's assuming you give uh, Seton Hall the win, which will be final in about 20 seconds or so time. Parker Williams on, freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. It's a store three. That's good. It'll just be window dressing at this point. Jameer Harris will dribble this thing out. And Seton Hall, once trailing early by 10, outscores St. John's by 17 in the second half to win by 22. A convincing W for Shaheen Holloway and company here this afternoon.